before I became an artist, um, I was an apprentice plumber, which meant that I was in the hole digging most of the time or delivering things. Um, during that time I was a plumber, um, I was slowly going blind. Um, went and saw an eye doctor and the next week I was in the hospital and I had brain surgery. I was 85% blind, I had no peripheral vision. And um, thank God that the brain surgery that I had was successful. At that point, I decided to use my hands and my eyes uh, for the benefit of myself and others. And I enrolled in the American Academy of Art under the supervision of Irv, Irv Shapiro. Um, I went there three years and the year after I graduated, I was hired as a full-time instructor teaching in the foundations department. I got into watercolor uh, for a few reasons. Uh, first, my father had um, an enthusiasm for watercolor. He always loved watercolor and he encouraged me to try taking uh, the watercolor class down at the American Academy of Art. And the second reason, he directed me to Winslow Homer, which was a great watercolorist, um, which only gave me more motivation to try to capture the watercolor. And I struggled through the course. It was five months before I had one good painting. Um, and I painted anywhere from two to three a day. And um, it was a struggle, but the reason why I was attracted to it was the luminosity of the colors. I started off for a year in oil painting, uh, which was a lot easier. Um, you can correct your mistakes where watercolor is a little bit less forgiving, but there are certain things that you can do to correct that. The most fascinating thing about the watercolor is uh, the outcome. When you're finished uh, with a watercolor, it is, it's something that just shines to you. Um, the hardest part about watercolor to learn it is what to anticipate uh, when it's dry. You cannot teach that. That's something that has to be experienced by the student. The materials that I use in my watercolor classes and in my studio when I'm by myself painting are usually the best materials that I can afford. I do not advise any student to buy student quality materials of any sort. They'll give you nothing but problems. But I use, as far as paper goes, I use um, arches, 300 pound, rough, cold press, and sometimes hot press. I use the Fabriano 300 pound uh, cold press or hot press. Um, as far as the brushes go, I always recommend real hair brushes. You cannot beat those. The synthetic hair brushes are wonderful for acrylic or even for oil, but for watercolor, real hair is very important because you need to load that brush, brush with pigment. You need to load that brush with water. Uh, and synthetics will not do it. If you can't afford real hair brushes, I suggest that you get a real hair synthetic brush. It's the next, next best thing. And check out different art stores before you purchase anything. Uh, it's very important because not one store has everything that you might need. Um, the watercolors, I, like I said before, I do not recommend student grade anything because it will cause a problem. As the watercolor paper, student grade will cause a problem. You want 100% cotton paper. Anything else that doesn't say 100% cotton paper has wood fibers in it and it has a tendency of pilling and it doesn't have the durability of 100% cotton paper. Um, the brushes that I use, I've used Langnickel, Winsor Newton, uh, Morella, which I don't believe is in, in business anymore. Um, Robert Simmons brushes are very good, but go for the quality. 
do not go for cheap. The watercolor paints that I use is a, a number of different types of paint or name brands. Um, I use Holbein, Winsor Newton. I've used American Journey, Graham, which has a honey base to it. It's a little bit different. Uh, some artists don't like it and some do, but you can keep your watercolors a little bit more wet for a longer time. Um, but it depends. I use a lot of different name brands of paint because certain colors I like in this name brand and certain colors I like in that name brand. Not all of them are actually the same. In other words, Burnt Sienna in this name brand is not the same Burnt Sienna in the other name brand. They have different uh, chemical makeups that they create. So you really have to get out there and paint to understand what kind of paints you like, what colors you like, this sort of thing. And you can go to my website and see the different names of the paints and try different name brands. Explore the different options that you have. What do I try to express through my paintings would be the beauty of nature and probably man's uh, influence on nature. But most of it's just plain beauty. I'm not into really giving a message through my artwork. I just want to have other people enjoy what I see and how I see it. Choosing my subjects, um, I can go hiking through the woods up in northern Wisconsin where we have our log cabin. Uh, we go to waterfalls, we go to rivers and creeks and uh, different times of the year we try to capture the beauty of the snow or the fall leaves. Um, that's what I really like to paint. My style has changed over the years to where I've tightened up my watercolors uh, in certain areas and loosened up in other areas. Uh, it's an evolution of how you perceive your subject matter. Um, I'm using quite a few more colors than I used to. Um, I usually paint with anywhere from six to nine pigments on my tray at a time. I feel that if you have too many pigments on your tray, um, it gets a little bit too confusing sometimes. But I have evolved into different subject matter. I've detailed things a little bit more. Um, layering the watercolor has changed from when I was a student till now. Um, but a normal progression or an evolution of your style uh, will change like your handwriting over the years you begin to see things differently and you see colors differently and you see the proper values more um, because everything is based on drawing and value and then color. The artist that influenced me probably the most would be one, my watercolor instructor, Irv Shapiro. Uh, my life drawing instructor, Bill Parks. And then there's a list of other artists down below, such as Winslow Homer, who has influenced me probably since I was a child, seeing uh, prints of his paintings. Um, I would say Sargent, N.C. Wyeth, uh, which is the father of Andrew Wyeth, Richard Schmid, who's still living, who's a wonderful painter, uh, John Carlson, uh, I was fortunate enough to see some of his paintings out in Boston when I was visiting there. And I also use his book uh, to teach by. And I also was very influenced by a good friend and colleague of mine, Robert Kurjecki. Uh, he's taught me numerous things over the years about art and also kind of a mentor, mentor uh, in teaching. The best piece of advice I have been given is by numerous instructors and, and other artists. Uh, number one, don't give up. Number two, be patient with yourself and only judge yourself 
by your own artwork, but look around and see what you can learn from other people. Um, and the thing about understanding where you want to go, make a plan, uh, decide the type of material you want to paint, uh, and study it backwards, forwards, and upside down so that you will eventually get it right. You won't the first few tries or the first several attempts, but you have to keep on trying. Don't worry about wasting paper. Uh, if you don't make mistakes, you're not trying. The biggest pet peeve I have uh, about the art world or people coming to you and asking you to do something for them, um, I've had numerous people ask me, could you do that painting half size for half the price? Usually the answer is no with a smile because I tell them smaller paintings are harder to do most of the time. The key element in creating a good composition, um, there is a natural order of things. And one is understanding what good drawing is. Second, good value, and then finally color. Uh, but to be instructed is the best way from a reputable instructor. Um, composition has to have certain elements in it. Um, I've run into or read about in the past uh, many artists that are self-taught. The problem with that is usually the instructor. So get some good instruction behind you to understand the key elements of composition. Um, you have to be instructed correctly. Uh, and I suggest going to Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting to understand how to paint a landscape. Of the time that I spend teaching is probably two thirds of the time, one third of the time in a studio. But you have to remember that I really want to teach people how to truly see. And second is that um, I learn from the students also. Um, I'm still a student. Um, I consider myself a student. And I think as soon as people um, realize that you never stop learning, um, you can't really fulfill your dream that you're looking for. I've just launched an online art course called Towering Winds. And the idea is to get the beginners and the intermediate students. And again, I wanted to go to a larger mass crowd um, because I, like I said before, I do enjoy teaching. I enjoy helping people and I enjoy helping people see how they can do different things on the paper. The last show that I was in was uh, the signature members of the Illinois Watercolor Society at the Peabody State in Oak Brook. Um, I'm in a gallery currently in Brown County, and it's the Brown County Gallery Art Association. And um, I have probably about 10 works down there right now. The only advice I have for somebody that wants to become a full-time artist, uh, make it your dream and don't let anybody derail you. Um, stay on track. Be positive in your, your attempts at anything that you do. Um, I had no real art training before I went to art college. I had two very simple art courses in high school, which amounted really to no instruction. Um, and I really wanted to do this. So if you really want to become an artist, um, take some very good courses and from very good instructors, whether it be college orientated or outside college. Um, it's important that you strive for your dream. Don't give up. 
under any circumstances, and most of all, accept your failures. That's what you learn by.